Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. In this episode, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to get started with your resin 3D printer. Alright, let's get to it. So real quick, before we get into the video, I want to say a huge thank you to Fantasy. They are my newest supporter on Patreon, and I wanted to take a minute to say thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. In order to follow along with this video, there's a few things that you're going to need. First, you'll need a resin 3D printer. Next, you'll need resin. I highly recommend the standard gray resin from WiseTech. Next, you should always wear a pair of nitrile gloves anytime you're handling uncured resin. After that, you're going to need a USB drive to get the files from your computer to your printer. Next, you'll need a sheet of standard printer paper. To make this a little easier, you can cut it down to roughly the size of your LCD. So those are the minimum items that you'll need to get started with resin 3D printing and to follow along with this video. But there are some additional items that I recommend that can be really helpful. First is a Mach 5 screen protector. This will protect your screen from any accidental spills and save you a ton of money. I also recommend this slim USB drive. It's a much smaller profile, so it doesn't stick out like other drives. Next, I recommend that you get a small level and a pack of shims. This will allow you to level your printer to make sure that you can get as much in your resin vat as possible. And lastly, I find that this baby formula mixer makes the job of mixing your resin really quick and easy. So those are some additional items that I recommend to help you get the most out of your resin 3D printing experience. And if you're interested in any of these items, you can find a kit link down below. So once you get your printer unboxed and plugged in, the first thing I recommend doing is checking the LCD screen. This isn't a very common issue, but if you don't check it now, it can be a little harder to check later, and it can be really frustrating to try to diagnose it with settings whenever it's actually an LCD issue. So go ahead and take off the bill plate and remove the vat. Then from here, we're going to put a piece of paper over the LCD screen and either use the screen test function from the menu of the printer or just start a print. And what you're looking for is any kind of discrepancy between the image that you see on the LCD screen and the image that you see on the touch screen. In other words, if the image on the LCD is flickering, or if it shuts off before the one on the touchscreen, or if it looks really off-centered, those are all issues that could point to a bad LCD, and you should take pictures and contact support right away. If you're not seeing any problems with the LCD screen, then now would be a good time to install the Mach 5 screen protector, and then level the build plate on your printer. This process is slightly different for each printer, so make sure to follow the instructions in the manual that came with your printer. And if you don't have a screen protector, then go ahead and level the build plate following your instructions. Once you're done with that, if you have a small level and a pack of shims or something you can use as a shim, then go ahead and put the level on your printer and check to see how far off level it is. If it's really bad, maybe the surface that you have it on is really crooked, then go ahead and try to level that up as best you can. The point of this is that when you go to put resin in there, if it's tipped to one side, then you're not going to be able to put as much resin in as you would be if it were level, because as the build plate comes down, it'll displace resin and push it off the side that it's tipping to. So keep that in mind, it's something I like to do to make sure that I can get as much resin in the vat as possible. Alright, so now with all that taken care of, the next thing we have to do is get your file ready for printing. In order to do that, we'll need a slicer. Now a slicer is just a program that will take the generic 3D file and it will export it into a format that your printer can read, along with all these specific parameters for your printer. Things like build volume and resolution. Additionally, it will allow you to put in your own custom settings to try to tweak your results to get better and better prints. Now, there are a ton of different slicers out there, but the two most popular right now are going to be Chitu Box and Lychee Slicer. It's a good idea to test a couple of different slicers and go with the one that just seems to work the best for you. It makes the most sense, it works with your flow, and just you can natively pick it up. I'm mostly going to be using Lychee in this video, but I will give a brief overview of Chitu Box for anyone who wants to give that a shot. I will say that most slicers are going to be pretty similar in the way that they look and the basic functions that they give you in order to interact with the model. So what I'm showing here in Lychee should be applicable to T2Box as well. But if you have any questions, reach out to me. I'm always happy to help. The first thing you'll want to do in any slicer is make sure that you have your printer selected. In Lychee, you do that by going up to 3D Printer, then clicking on the plus, and then from here, find the manufacturer of your printer, then find the model. If you can't find your printer in this list, then reach out to the manufacturer. They might be able to provide you with a profile or in some other way, get you up and running with your slicer. Once you've added the correct printer, the next thing you'll want to do is add some resin. 
I'm not sure if you'll see this window or not. I think this may only be for the pro version, but if you do, this is basically just going to be recommendations from the community for different resins. In my opinion, they're pretty hit or miss, so for now, I would recommend you just go down to add new resin. And this is where you'll add values for things like layer height and exposure time. If you don't know what to add here, check the description down below. I'll have some helpful links for spreadsheets with recommended settings, and I'll have my own general recommended settings. Now, one word of caution though, when it comes to recommended settings, they should always be thought of as a starting point. And that's because there are just too many different variables to account for from one printing setup to another. So you might be using the same resin, the same settings, and the same printer, but be getting different results than somebody else. So just keep that in mind. Recommended settings should be a starting point that'll probably require some fine tuning. Now, the recommended settings that I'm going to give are going to be a little overboard, so they're probably going to be a little overexposed, but that's because I want to make sure that you're going to get some results that we can fine tune later. And I certainly will get into that. We can use different kinds of uh, exposure tools and things to fine tune our exposure to get amazing results later on. But for now, I just want to make sure that we do get results so that nobody gets discouraged. In Chitu Box, you can add your printer by going to Settings, then click on this icon, then find your printer from this list. And then once you have your printer added, you can go to the print tab in the settings window to find all your different settings. And again, if you don't know what to use here, check the description, I'll have some stuff there to get you started. And then once you have your printer added, the next thing that you'll need to do is bring in some files. There's two different ways you can do that in most slicers. You can click and drag, which simply means that you'll open up a window, grab the files that you wanna print, drag them over into your print space and drop them. Or you can come up to where it says import and you can find your models that way. Click on your file, then hit open. And now if you've never downloaded models before and you don't know where to find them, I have a full video describing that whole process, which you can find in the description down below. So I brought in three separate models, and as you can see, they've all been brought into the center of the build plate, which means that they're overlapping with each other. So if I was to print them like this, they would print exactly the way that you see them here in the preview. In most 3D slicers, you can hover over a model to highlight it, then hold down the left mouse button to click and drag it around in your build plate. The other option is that you can use these arrows in much the same way, but only move it in one plane. So if you're looking for a specific movement, this can be really helpful. You can move it left and right, up and down, or you can move it up off the build plate or down below the build plate. Now an important note about using this feature, if you move it below the build plate, it will print exactly the way you see it uh, previewed here, which means it'll cut everything that's below the build plate completely off. Same way if you move it up above the build plate, it's going to print with the model floating in the air like this. And both will cause some issues if you don't know what you're doing. So definitely make sure that the model stays sitting on the build plate. So in order to undo what we just did, we're gonna hit control or hold control and hit Z and that's going to undo the last two movements and bring it back down onto the build plate. All right, so I have all three models organized on my build plate so that they're no longer overlapping with each other. Real quick, let's talk about how to navigate around this 3D space. If you click and hold the left mouse button, you can create a large selection window, just like you can on most operating systems. Mouse wheel will scroll in and scroll out, which can be really helpful when you wanna get a closer look at your model. If you click and hold the right mouse button, it will allow you to move around your models and change your viewpoint. And this will be similar in most 3D slicers, but the buttons might be slightly different. So take a little bit of time to figure out how to move around the space because it'll make things a lot easier. And while we're in this orientation, I can show you what it looks like when a model is off the build plate. Typically, unless you know what you're doing, like I said, you always wanna have your model sitting on the build plate because that will get you the best results. So if I bring this model up above the build plate, you can see how the bottom went from green to the same blue color that the rest of the model is. If I bring it down below the build plate, you'll see that everything that's not gonna be printed now has this striation of blue and black. So I'm gonna hold control and hit Z to undo those last two movements to bring it back onto the build plate. Now I have this bottom is highlighted in green to show that it is sitting directly on the build plate. And the reason you're not seeing that with these models is because the supports were created in Lychee Slicer and it was exported in a file type that's specific to Lychee Slicer. So to kind of help you get a better idea for where the supports are and let you see them a little better, when you're above the build plate, you can see what's called a raft or a pad underneath these supports. And then if you go below the build plate, that raft disappears so that you can see the supports. A good indication that they are on the build plate though is this green highlighted strip around the side. Real quick, let's talk about these models and why I chose them for this video. On the left is a gnome mage from TPK Lab. 
They have a ton of really great models, and I definitely recommend checking them out. You can find their Patreon link down below. On the right is a bugbear from Brit Minis. This model, as well as a ton of other really cool models from Brit Minis, is up on Thingiverse. You can find all their stuff down below. Now, the reason that I chose these models, beyond the fact that they're really cool, is that on the left here, you get a really good example of what's called a pre-supported model. And that's exactly what it sounds like. You'll get this model with supports added from the creator, which means you can just drop it in your slicer, add your settings, and you're ready to go. On the other hand, the bugbear from Brit Minis is made to be supportless. And again, that's exactly what it sounds like. It's designed so that supports are not required. And that means that this is also going to be really easy to print. All you have to do is make sure that it's sitting on your build plate, and the added bonus is that you don't have to worry about removing supports once the model's finished. Now, the reason that I'm recommending you start with either a pre-supported or a supportless model is because adding supports is definitely a skill. And like any other skill, it takes a while to understand it and to get really good at it. So trying to learn all the different facets of correctly supporting a model while you're also learning the basics of resin printing can be really overwhelming. So by using either a pre-supported or a supportless model, what you're doing is you're allowing yourself to focus on the basics of resin printing, and then later on, once you have those down, you can jump into the additional learning curve of understanding supports. But that's just my recommendation. If you want to jump into it now, more power to you. Now at this point, we have all of our models arranged on the build plate. We have our settings filled out. At this point, we can go ahead and plug in the USB drive that we're going to be using with our resin printer. After that, we can go up to export, then export sliced file. From this window, you can navigate to your USB drive. And if you want to rename the file, you can highlight this area before you hit save. And then when you hit save, it'll start slicing the file and it'll give you a preview. And then once that's done, your slicer should give you a general estimate on the amount of print time and the amount of material that will be used. In this case, you can see the print time will be 1 hour and 21 minutes, and the estimated resin used will be 13.47 milliliters. Now you can go ahead and minimize your slicer so that you can safely eject your USB drive. All right, so the next step is adding resin to the printer. But before we can do that, we have to make sure that the resin itself is mixed together well. The reason being, when resin sits for a little while, the different components will actually separate from each other. So in order to get a good result, we have to make sure that those different components are all mixed back together. You can shake the bottle by hand to get everything mixed back together again. However, I do have a word of caution. Resin does give off gas, and that gas will build up inside the bottle. So if you don't open the lid and let some of those gases out before you shake it, you run the risk of cracking the lid. This is something I've had happen to me, and it was definitely no fun to deal with and no fun to clean up. So just that word of caution, if you're going to shake the bottle, open up the lid, leave it open for 10 to 15 seconds, let some of those gases out, and then shake it. The other option is that you can use a formula stirrer like I'm doing here. I found that in about a minute, this does a really good job of mixing all the components back together, and I get really great results every time. However, I do want to point out first that you should never use this for anything but resin, and that goes for all of your tools. Anytime they touch resin, that should be the only thing they're used for. And also, don't use this to mix up your resin in the vat. This is only to be used in the bottle. Now, when it comes to putting resin into the vat of your 3D printer, all you need to do is put in a small amount of resin, just enough to cover the bottom of the vat. Then, from your printer menu, send the build plate to the home position, so it's going to bring it all the way down to the LCD screen. And then once the build plate is resting above the LCD, go ahead and add in a little bit of resin, and then add in a little bit more, and a little bit more, in small increments, until you get the vat to about 85% full. This will give you enough room that when the build plate is moving up and going back down in the resin and displacing it, that you won't get any spills over the sides. And then once the vat is full of resin, manually move the build plate about 30 or 40 millimeters up out of the vat. And the reason for this is, some printers get a little weird if you start a print when they're already in the home position, so just back it off, like I said, about 30 or 40 millimeters. Then, if you haven't already, go ahead and put your USB drive into your printer. From there, Use the printer menu to find the model you want to print, and go ahead and get it started. Your build plate will move back down to that home position, only this time it'll stay there and a print will start, and you can see that on the touch screen. Now, before we end this video, I do have one more bit of advice. When your print's at the 25-35% to 35 mark, go ahead and hit the pause button. On most resin 3D printers, when you hit the pause button, what will happen is the build plate will lift up out of the vat. This can save you a ton of time, because with smaller models, until they're about 80 or 90% done, the build plate won't be high enough over the vat for you to be able to see if there's anything stuck to it or not. 
which means if you don't use this feature, especially when you're first starting out, you might waste a few hours waiting for a print to finish, only to find out at the 90% mark that there's nothing stuck to your build plate. So basically, if you hit the pause button and you don't see anything that's an obvious failure, then go ahead and restart your print. And if you pause your printer and find that your build plate is empty, I promise you're not alone. I'm here to help, it's why I started this channel, so feel free to join my Facebook group or reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and I'll happily help you figure out what went wrong and how to get better results. Alright, so that brings us to the end of the video. I really do hope that you now understand at least the basics of starting your first print on a resin 3D printer. And if you did find the video helpful, please like and subscribe. It does help the channel and I really do appreciate it. And if you like the work that I'm doing and you would like to support the channel, then please take a look at my Patreon. I did just open up a new tier on my Patreon that is all about helping people get started with either their resin or FDM 3D printer. So if that sounds like it might be helpful to you or somebody you know, take a look. Alright, thank you all for your amazing support, thank you for watching, now let's go print something.